pre-conference schedule, Arkansas, Michigan State, TCU, Clemson, VCU, and Maryland. And it will be the Braves first as they will move from left to right. They're wearing their road purple. And we'll take a look at their starting five. Their highlighted player is the guy we talked about on the pregame, and that is Jeremiah Kendall. And the Braves take a 2-0 lead. Kendall right on cue, sealing Chris Coleman right underneath the rim. They'll look to him early tonight. No Javian Davis guarding Kendall. Maybe the foul trouble that's plagued Javian Davis. If you don't want your most foul-prone player guarding your opponent's best offensive player. UAB starting five. Their leading scorer, Eric Gaines. Bingo. Nothing but net from DeKendrian Thorne. And if you're the Blazers, it, after dropping your home opener, you don't want to come out and get behind early. We saw them fight back against the Bradley Braves a couple of weeks ago. They've got to get off to a better start defensively. Vasquez, sweet move, and ball comes off the cup. Ortiz coming back to play defense. Alcorn gets off a three. Alcorn, rather, gets off a three, and it's good, and it also... Creates an early. And that's extremely <laughs> impressive. That's the <laughs> dedication to how you do that. getting to your spots. And obviously, they're going to get it to him in places where he can be most productive. And great IQ on his part by not forcing threes, especially in today's game. Gaines draws Joshua. This is Vasquez. UAB looking for their first points. Vasquez to the paint. Cannot finish. Second chance won't go as well. And that will be Braves ball. And we've seen the Blazers commit to attacking the rim. As I mentioned, Alcorn, not a great three-point shooting team. The Blazers, they're not burning it up from three either, shooting 26% on the three on the season. And A.J. Vasquez, they're attacking the rim. Had two good looks at it. Very creative scorer. Does a great job of attacking the rim. Just can't get it to go early. Vasquez also had a nice tournament up there in Asheville. 14 points in his last game, five rebounds against Maryland. Joshua. For about 12 feet, no good. And Davis, uh, Davis rather, with his first rebound. Two minutes gone by. Blazers have not scored. But a Johnson now in. It's a kick. Right there's the right idea. Chris Coleman, Christian Coleman trying to get the basketball inside to Javian Davis. J.B. Davis, he's going he's gonna to draw a double team. We saw Clemson double team him last week. Maryland sent a guy at him as well. So he'll have to be strong with the ball, but also he'll have to be counted on to make some good decisions and, some, and facilitate some of the stuff offensively for the Blazers. You mentioned that Davis got in foul trouble against Maryland. He only had four points, seven rebounds. And, and again, he's got to be on the floor tonight. He, he has to be on the floor because the reality is the couple of guys behind him just haven't played as much. Three from the corner will not go. Davis tried to keep it alive briefly, and it winds up in the hands of Jeremiah Gambrell. Joshua pull up from about 17, and look at a 9-0 lead by Alcorn State. And Alcorn now building it offensively, playing quick, playing fast, not afraid to take shots in transition. Coleman might have gotten away with a travel, and then too hard off the window. So the Blazers about two and a half minutes in, pitching a shutout. Alcorn State with a 9-0 lead. Double team, and the ball will stay in the hands of the visiting Braves. Let's take a look at Alcorn State offensively. We see right here Joshua pushing in transition. Nice 12-footer right at the foul line. Butter Johnson just a touch late on the challenge. They're looking to play fast. They're, they have nothing to lose. Obviously, they're playing a tough non-conference schedule. They know they're going to have to come in and score points, especially in a place like here where the Blazers are turning teams over and getting out defensively. You don't have to wait. Go ahead and attack, and that's what Alcorn's doing so far. 9-0 lead as they try to stretch it to double figures. Joshua says, yes, we will. 11-0. And that's the Joshua quickness splitting the double team there, getting to the cup for the nice finish. Andy Kennedy searching on his bench, trying to find the right combo. Turn around Butter. And Butter Johnson with the first two UAB points. 11 to 2. 
for the Blazers. Butter Johnson, that's what he does really well. He gets right to that mid-range game. You don't see a lot of mid-range from guys much anymore, but he's probably one of the best mid-range shooters on this Blazer team. Off the glass. Kendall now with seven points early. Lead back to double digits as Butter tries a three. Rebounded by Joshua and the Braves. Joshua trying to push and run, Mo. The defense by Lindeborg. She gets the block. UAB in transition, and Gaines comes up short, but I believe he drew a foul. Right there. I like what Joshua did right there. He's not backing down at all. Basket covered with Blazers. He still tried to attack. Blazers right there, one of their first opportunities in transition. As we see if Josh right here, attack getting right into Lax Lindenberg's chest. Shot block, as you get into their chest, you have a greater chance to finish right there with Kendall. And here we see Joshua attacking the rim. Blazers there. Good defense by the Blazers. But Joshua, I like what I've seen early from Alcorn. Foul was called on Benet, and the junior from France has two early fouls. Almost four minutes gone by. UAB one bucket, one basket, and there's Gaines, who goes one for two. Mo and I have talked about this over the last few years. If you're a visiting team coming into Bartow, you got to score early and you got to limit your turnovers. So check for scoring early and check for limiting the turnovers. That's off the glass. And a rebound above everybody else for Butta Johnson and stolen back. Shot in a basket, and that's the Kendrian Thorne. And that's Thorne right there connecting on the three. Blazers did a good job of getting the defensive rebound. Thorne sneaking behind, poking it away from the steal. I love the pace that Alcorn is playing with offensively. I'm not sure if, I, if I'm looking at the right stats. Here's a steal by Joshua. It's about a one on two. A three ball that goes in and out. Second chance goes back up and in by Benet. I was about to say, I'm not looking at the right stats. Alcorn State only makes three threes a game. They already have two in the first four minutes. They have two right now. They take 13 a game. And the Blazers haven't done a good job of finding them in transition. Have, they've opened threes. These guys aren't even contesting these shots. Tony, Tony wants three. That's off of Alcorn State. We will get our to Texas Southern this year. So maybe they have a little chip on their shoulder now. They're back in Bartow. Jeremiah Kendall, he's showing out right now. He was the only Alcorn State player on the first team preseason list for the SWAT conference. So you mentioned he made his first three tonight. So it seems like right now the Braves are feeling right at home. We have to remember, as Lyndon just said, Mo. They've won the SWAC two years in a row. This is not a bottom feeder. And the other thing that I keep thinking about, and you saw them on the road, UAB's got nine new players, three JUCO guys. Bucket from outside, Thorn. I mean, chemistry is really the biggest word. And, and Alcorn State, they are a veteran team. They're, they are an experienced team. Guys know their roles. They thrive in those, in those, role, in those spots. And for the Blazers, they're still figuring out a lot about where, who's going to score, who's going to shoot, who's going to do the different playmaking responsibilities. And to the first half, we're seeing a more confident, more consistent offensive team for sure. Let me, play, State. let me play on what you're talking about. How about Byron Joshua and DeKendrian Thorne? They're in their fourth year and fifth year in this program. UAB doesn't, uh, well, Tony Tony would be close, but uh, those are two primetime guys who have, seen a lot of basketball for all corn state right and you just don't see that a lot in today's college game the consistency them being here the entire time they know exactly where each other's going to be on the court and it shows in how they play after a miss under the basket by james white all corn state joshua and it's off of joshua barry dunning jr will inbound for uab blazers down by 15 after such a huge win against Maryland in Asheville and after playing a great game against Clemson, you know, if you're a Blazer fan, you thought maybe, okay, we're going to turn the corner at home. And you see Eric Gaines with a fantastic finish. You figure we've got our sort of our mojo going in the right direction. You come out really, really flat. 
against a confident team like who said who's been in this building before this isn't their first time here championship team and the guy handling the balls in his fourth year as the point guard it's Benet drawing the foul he's got some nice low post moves we see Eric Gaines here slicing in the paint such a crafty finisher right hand left hand he just kind of floats CB and he'll have to do a lot of that. Blazers down by 13 early. Look for him in 13 minutes, 15 seconds. He'll have to kind of get going offensively. He's kind of choosing to kind of take it a little easier, taking his, choosing his spots a little, a little more patiently than we've seen in the first three games. Almost a picture-perfect seven minutes for Alcorn State. They lost the shootout their last game against Arkansas State Tuesday, in which they gave up 100 points. They lost 100 to 84. They gave up no, 19 threes in that game. And UAB with a different approach. They continue to attack the rim, but they're coming up empty. Three, Joshua. Now, it's Gaines. He's got help on the wing. That's White. No basket. And the Blazers, I think they have the right formula offensively. Continue to attack the basket. That's how we've seen them get back in games. They've been down early, not settling for jump shots. To Alcorn's, in their, to their credit, they've done a great job of just forcing them to take tough, contested shots at the rim. And the Blazers just haven't been able to finish. Thorne picked up the foul. Dunning with a second chance and stripped by Kendall. And that's just the strength of a senior against a guy who doesn't have as much experience. Right there, Barry Dunny. Kendall rips it right from his hands, right underneath the basket. UAB, in the past couple games, they've done a great job of executing on the baseline out of bounds, getting easy points there. If they want to get back in this game, they'll have to do a little bit of that tonight, too. Joshua against Gaines. Gaines got a hand on it. And saved by Alcorn's Jalen Hawkins. And Hawkins able to finish. Hawkins there sliding and slipping around. I think the Blazer fans here wanted to travel, but he did a great job of holding that pivot foot down and pivoting and getting an easy basket there. Hawkins also, by the way, from the Bronx. And James White gets in the scoring column. James White, the old Miss transfer. He'll have to come out here and do more. Andy Kennedy's looking to see who will come out here. We talked about this slow start. Blazers only shooting 29% compared to Alcorn 67. One thing that's standing out to me so far, Alcorn has five steals on the Blazers. So that just shows, again, a slow start, not being a very, you know, buttoned up start, a sloppy start for the Blazers. So we'll see if they can get things corrected in the second part of this first half. Christian Coleman gathers in the rebound. Strong move draws a foul again, continuing to work in the paint. Axel Lindeborg. The Blazers get into their spots. Typically, if you see a UAB player right around that right elbow, he's going to rip through and attack the rim, just as you saw the Axel Lindeborg do right there. Uh, A.J. Vasquez, great job coming off the bench, providing the scoring punch against Maryland. Let's see if he can come out right here as we see wide open three for him. Man, I thought he was going to prove me to be uh, <laughs> prophetic. Right. Instead, he'll take the <laughs> off the glass. <laughs> One of the few second chance opportunities for the Blazers right there. Vasquez cashing in right at the rim. See, a little pressure now, Mo, defensively from UAB. Well, you can't get into your pressure if you're UAB if you can't score. And so the Blazers, typically, they get into their 1-3-1, especially here at home, against such a four shooting, three point shooting team such as Alcorn State, you would think they would get a chance to go a little zone, a little more but Alcorn today has been kind of, been knocking them down Yeah, I would say alleged poor shooting, that shot clock emptied out, that will be UAB basketball and that may be the best defensive possession of the first half of the Blazers right there you see James White running down the rebound, finding Vasquez underneath the rim for the easy putback by the way, that was a Kurt Bloom-esque no-look pass <laughs> on the asphalt courts in North Salem, New York, Westchester County. Not exactly the Bronx, but <laughs> you would have caught me uh, a few years ago doing that one. It's White. Got it. Uh, Mo, I always said this as a 
street ball player for me. I would lead the league in both turnovers and assists. <laughs> <laughs> you get the best of both worlds. Well, listen, sometimes I think Andy Kennedy would take street ball, any kind of ball right now if it gets the Blazers going offensively. That's a great move by James White. Just an individual play, attacking, getting to his spot. White is moving up the depth chart. This is game number four. No foul. Andy wanted an offensive foul. Strong move, but no finish there. And now UAB trying to cut into a double-digit lead. Vasquez thought about it. It's closer. The reverse will draw a whistle. And Vasquez, his job is to come off the bench and score. Blazers need points. He seems to be a player early on who can score in bunches here. Doesn't settle for the three, attacks the rim, draws the contact, and now we have a chance to go to the foul line for two. Mo, I forgot to ask you, what city in, in uh, Alabama are you from? I'm from Lafayette, Alabama. Lafayette, okay. But you have a very, very unique way, not unique, but a very uh, interesting and, and spot-on way of pronouncing the Bronx. <laughs> I like the way you did that. You've done that a few times. we got a lot of Bronx guys, including the guy shooting. Wood. I'm impressed. Vasquez started his career at St. Bonaventure's. He had two good years at St. Bonaventure. Went to a junior college was out in Salt Lake City last year. Vasquez trying to D up Joshua right now. Boy, Joshua's quick. And a 12-footer comes up a little short. White with a rebound. Vasquez. Crowd trying to get into it. And again, UAB working the ball in the paint low, creating a foul. That, that's what they have to do. They haven't been able to score from the perimeter consistently over the course of the first three games. To their credit, there's, they are realizing it. They're attacking the rim. And when you're in a scoring drive, when you can't get the ball to go in from the perimeter or even from the inside, one of the ways you can manufacture points is by getting to the foul line right there. You see Coleman drawing the foul, and now we have a chance to get UAB to cut this lead even more. Benet has now committed three fouls. <laughs> Coleman, number two JUCO recruit in the nation. What an incredible story he is. Graduated high school he was six foot one he is now six nine spent years working in a walmart in his hometown of winsboro louisiana that just you, it's hard when you read it you're like no you're kidding me and then you got to read it again right you told me about that during the practice i'm like come on you're making that up and now we're seeing the blazer here force all corner to some tough perimeter shots Lob that was intended for Coleman. Intercepted instead by Jeremiah Kendall. Good ball movement by the Braves. And then back up top. A leaner draws a foul. And it looks like that will count for Jalen Hawkins. And that's great offense right there by Alcorn State. Turning down threes. Gamble had missed a three earlier. Didn't settle for the three. Attack. We see the Blazers in a scramble here. And that gives Hawkins a chance to attack the closeout, draw the contact, and now he has a chance for the and one. Landon Bussey's Alcorn State Braves up on the road here with 8.43 remaining. Bussey himself, two-time SWAC coach of the year. And he has put together an outstanding program, 18 wins last year. Twice in a row to the NIT, as they say again. Well, this is not just picking up a paycheck. No. I mean, this is a good team. They're, they're a really good team. They're a solid team. They're a veteran team, and they're a confident team. You see them come out on the road. They're attacking early offensively. The Blazers have not been able to turn them over, so they're playing with poise, playing smart basketball, and that's what you have to do on the road. Gaines Wyatt was ding up on Gaines. Spin by Eric, and then it will be... All corn ball. Right there. That Blazers possession was the opposite of what we just saw on the other end of Alcorn State. Ball Why do you movement. say that? Because right there, Eric Gaines, great offensive player. But the way you chip into leads is by ball movement. It's very, very difficult. 
to attack and play one-on-one -on -one there. When you find yourself having to take more than two to three dribbles to get your shot off, chances are you got to come off of it a little bit. Again, when you're winning, you're up, but you're down 10. So at this moment, if you're, if you're Andy Kennedy, you want to see more ball movement, more guys moving without the ball. And, of course, some turnovers like that right there. Up to Gaines, who began his career at LSU. Vasquez, three ball. And that's a good sign for Vasquez, who is slowly emerging as the best scorer from the bench for the UAB Blazers. Byron Joshua will back it out. Blazers within seven. Under eight remaining, opening half. Got a pair of one and two teams. Long three, so wish. DeKendrian Thorne. And that's his second three-point of the night. That's a confident shot from a team that's shooting under 30% from three. White unable to connect on a two. UAB basketball. Well, we talked about this earlier, and then you and I talked about it in the pregame. Break, if you will, and from there, signed with LSU Alexandria, becoming the first player in community Christian college history to sign and go on to play with the school. So then after that stop at LSU Alexandria, he went to South Plains, and that's where he made his name, the number two overall two co-recruit, and now is landed in Birmingham. Uh, at the free throw line, Yaxel Lendebor, one of those top 10 junior college recruits by Andy Kennedy. Kennedy signed three of the top nine JUCOs, including Yaxel Lendenborg, who Mo actually committed to St. John's, but when Mike Anderson, former UAB coach, was relieved and replaced by Rick Patino, Lendenborg reopened his recruitment. He said to me, Patino wanted him to take a look, but he had thoughts of Coming to Andy Kennedy and UAB. Well, it's a great pickup for the UAB Blazers. One of their best interior defenders alongside Javian Davis as we see him stretch out against the 1-3-1 one, one zone here. Vasquez got his hand on it, deflected it, shot clock at 7. A little fadeaway that didn't go. Another good possession defensively for the Blazers again, as Mo pointed out, that 1-3-1. One, I am surprised that the Blazers didn't use that as much as I thought going into the Bradley game. Well, Back door, yes. Well, one of the issues is, and that's a great feed right there from Vasquez, one of the things is you can't get into that zone pressure when you don't score. And if you're having trouble offensively, it's hard to get back into that to go back to zone out of tra just regular transition defense. This is a very important stretch now for the Braves, a block. And the Blazers now within six, crowd on their side. And then Vasquez, plus one. And that's just the strength of Vasquez right there. He does what he does best. Upstate New York, St. Bonaventures, Salt Lake City Community College, and then became the number four recruit. You liked him during practice before the season even began. You, you saw something in Vasquez. Well, I've had a chance to see him a few times at practice, and I just love his work ethic and his the way he approaches the game, especially offensively. I think... It's taken him a couple of games to get acclimated to the speed of the game as well as the chemistry with the other guys. But all in all, he's done a really good job. No foul, but Alcorn State retains possession. And then a bomb won't go, and they're starting to take shots now that are perhaps out of their range and possession. Byron Joshua will do the inbounding. Hawkins. Nice bounce pass. Leads to an easy dunk. Somebody forgot to get Jeremiah Kendall. And Alcorn State there emptying out the corner, playing pick and roll here, ball side. Braves by five. So far, the Braves have kept this, uh, this crowd, which is usually an advantage for UAB. They kept him, uh, they kept them rather, uh, Fairly silent. Vasquez hard to the basket. And a foul. Back to the free throw line. The Blazers still attacking the rim. We see Alcorn State come out a little zone look to try to prevent some of that penetration. That time Vasquez catches on the on the corner in the corner and drives baseline. Not able to not able to cut him off quick enough. 
And he finds himself back at the line. Vasquez with a pair coming. He has 11 first half points. Career high, by the way, established that at St. Bonaventure. He had 20, so more than halfway done, or towards that, I should say, here in the first half. Got it. And all points State and the Blazers, their leading scores are guys that haven't essentially done a ton of scoring from their leading scores haven't really made a whole lot of noise offensively we've seen Thorne come out and score 10 he's only having about seven and a half a game and Vasquez he's coming off a really good game against Maryland his confidence is sky high offensively as well Vasquez got down on the court maintaining possession and then muscling up and in Kendall Leading scorer, Jeremiah Kendall, 28 and 14 against Arkansas State. Coleman uses the body and then second chance. Look at that quick jump. I don't think that counted, Delmo. And has hit one free throw tonight. He's got two coming his way. That was a shooting foul. And the Blazers, they closed this gap essentially from the free throw line. They haven't done a great job of shooting the basketball. They've gotten back into it with a few timely baskets from James White, A.J. Vasquez, but also tons of free throws. Oh, for 2. Those are two freebies UAB did not get. All Corn State with a chance to add on. That's stolen by White. White goes behind his back and then stolen back by Joshua, kick out for a three ball, got it, sink it, Gambrell. Gambrell in transition, no one close to him, really good find there from Joshua. You know, that reminded me of Duke Dean of Bradley, remember that in transition three that you called a couple of times in our uh, home opener. Coleman gets stripped, strong finish to the half here by Alcorn State after UAB had made a run. And here is an easy bucket. And right there, Christian Coleman gets stripped on one end, takes his time getting back. And the guy he's guarding finds a way to cut to the rim. Whenever your guy is lagging back, if you run right to that rim, that ball usually can find you. So Kendall now, after a slow start, he has 10. And the lead is back up to 10. Lead is down to 7. <laughs> a little inside out right there from the Blazers. All points staying committed to the zone. Blazers taking their first perimeter shot against the zone defense. If we were on the road, I would say, thank goodness Vasquez got on the bus. But <laughs> it's a home game, so thank goodness he found his way to Bartow Arena right now. He's keeping UAB in this game. Blazers down by seven. And here's White all alone. Now he's got some competition. White with eight. Great scoring from the Blazers bench tonight in James White and A.J. Vasquez. So lead back down to five. Let's see what happens in the last two minutes and 30 seconds. Three ball, corner. Got a whistle. And that's going to be on Vasquez. Four against the UAB 16. Would not have predicted that or forecasted that. Doing our homework and our prep. UAB with a steal. Vasquez leading a three-on-one break. Butta got fouled. It's two for two. Just two free throws. Usually, again, a, an outside guy. Mid-range, as uh, Mo said. For UAB, just seven fast break points right there. That's an opportunity for a fast break point for the Blazers. Didn't get it. Alcorn, 15. Points in the paint, fast break points. Has been, that's been the difference of the game so far. But a Johnson from Huntsville. It's a Grissom. Blazers are down by three. Braves in possession. They draw a double team. And now we see the Blazers rotating much better. Until Gaines Wyatt just Un finds a lane and goes through. Until Barry Dunning gives up dribble penetration there. So 
so far. I'm sure every New York native that follows Alcorn State is pretty proud of these guys tonight, the Absolutely. way they've been attacking and finishing around the rim. And they're going, that's my boy, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a travel. That time Tony, Tony, just a touch rush. Recognize he had an opportunity to push and possibly get a two-on-one situation. Just a little bit of a rush. All these Bronx boys better be Yankee fans, by the way. <laughs> can I confirm nor deny? Five-point lead, we can confirm that for the Braves. You know, they have held off UAB. I thought UAB, they were making that move, cut this lead down. Momentum and the crowd, but they've kept the distance just enough. Five-point lead for the Braves with possession. See some pressure again, and here's an outside three. Don't, uh, won't go, rather, and then Dunning collects the rebound. Alcorn has definitely weathered the storm, so to speak. You know, and they've done it just by playing solid, not rushing, and also taking care of the basketball. Blazers have not been able to turn them over. Vasquez in traffic finds Davis. Davis got it popped away, and then Davis gets it back. UAB should have numbers. Free throw line. Yes, but a Johnson. Six for Johnson. And that's his spot right there. If you watch UAB basketball, Butter Johnson lives around that foul line area looking for opportunities to take the pull-up jump shots. Now, Mo, I want you to interpret this. I'm not sure if I have one. You realize JV and Davis has not scored in this game. He, in has this not he has not scored. Whenever he's touched it, he's been surrounded by Braves. He's done a good job of not forcing it offensively. Unfortunately for him, he has to get some touches offensively to get going, you know, with his confidence. If you can't score, it makes it hard. Blow by move, and then Davis with the good defensive play. So there are many ways you can help your team. Tony, Tony, Vasquez, three. Wing three won't go, and then Johnson flying in for the rebound. With 48 seconds left to go, three-point lead for the Braves. Going into the half, Lyndon Blake will be talking with the coach who has the lead. <laughs> 48 seconds. That's a long time. We could easily. Well, Lyndon uh, <laughs> Linda might be going back and forth a few times. You mentioned Javion Davis hasn't scored a point. Offensively for the Blazers to have success, he will have to do more offensively. They have to have someone around that basket who's able to score, who's able to be a scoring threat. Foul trouble has plagued him the past couple of games, so his scoring hasn't been what we saw on opening night. But previous possession, great job of just playing straight up, getting vertical, and not committing the foul there. Might have been the best player on the court opening night, 20 points, 15 rebounds. They'll lean upon him. He, he's shaking his head now as I look out there at him. He knows that he has to play well in order for the players to have their best chance to win. Johnny. Hits his first two free throws of the season. Now the crowd gets into it as Alcorn State's lead is down to one. Important possession for the Braves. They have not let UAB take the lead. UAB has not led at all. That one's pushed up, will not go. Then Dunning Jr. with the board, but he hands it right to Alcorn State's Jeremiah Kendall for an easy two. Blazers, they've had a couple of possessions where they've secured the rebound and turned it over. Started his career at Monroe College, which is upstate New York, and one year at Prairie View. Landon Bussey, by the way, also came from Prairie View. There's Dunning Jr. And that's a good play by A.J. Vasquez there. Quick opportunity to score, essentially three on one against the Braves there. One last shot in this half. That one will count if it goes. And it will come up just short. Defensively, with the same intensity and competitive spirit that we saw them against Bradley, then this game will turn in their favor very quickly. On offense for the Braves, Byron Joshua finished with four first half points. Gambrell. Lady scorer Kendall has the low block. Lendeborg with a good defense, and he winds up with a rebound. Good no foul, by the way, by Axel Lindenborg. Here's a three for Butta Johnson. Got it. UAB has the lead. And that's a three right there in transition. Blazers not shooting the ball great from the perimeter, not from shooting it great from three, but doing a really good job the past couple of games of taking quality three-point shots. 
such as that one from Butter Johnson. Approximately 20 minutes and 30 seconds at home to take a lead. Alcorn State, I like this. No panic. They drive it inside to the Frenchman. And Benet able to finish. That's a great job by Gambrell not taking the three, not trying to answer with a three, being patient offensively. Vasquez muscles up for two. And that's his game, getting to the paint, getting to his right hand. He attacks that right side with aggressiveness every single time he touches the basketball. Blazers by two. We've seen zone looks from both teams. Both teams have done a really good job of not forcing up three-point shots against the zone. They've attacked it with dribble penetration. You see Vasquez come across with a block that's a foul he doesn't agree with. Vasquez will pick up the foul, as Mo talked about. You look at Eric Gaines with the assist to Butta Johnson. First lead of the game. And then, again, you've got to be strong. You see where he's squared up. Use those broad shoulders by Vasquez. <laughs> Benet. It's only, only the fifth free throw attempt tonight for Alcorn State. Blazers doing a great job of not sending them to the line. The push. Push. You saw that before I did on Jeremy Kendall. And Kendall there, he knows he <laughs> got a little too aggressive on the push there. Sometimes when you have, when you don't have position to rebound it, you just got to kind of let that play go. Uh, not a great foul for your leading scorer here early in the second half, which it picks up its second. Kendall's got to be on the floor again for Alcorn State. No, I, I don't think they've got enough offense without him. Time will tell. This is Lendeborg, Lendeborg rather, and then Gaines for three. So that's a good shot for Eric Gaines there. Lendeborg. Drew the double team, a little inside out. Davis picks up a loose change. Now to Butta Johnson. UAB does not have numbers, about a 23-footer. <laughs> and Butta Johnson, the most impressive part of that play, coming back to the basketball. Looks like a football player, like a receiver coming back to it to prevent Alcorn from stealing it. Found himself alone and had enough space to launch the three. But a hit for 17 against Clemson. That's his career high. UAB on the defense. Lendeborg, did it go off of him? Or did he? Get you know, if you're the Blazers, you have to be pretty content with Alcorn going four for 13 from the three for the first half. The actual Lendeborg was seven for 12 at the free throw line coming in. He had eight against the. Terrapins. UAB is in the early part of the season, game number four. They have a low percentage at the free throw line. They're going to have to get those shots in during conference play. Right, and you'll hear Andy Kennedy harp on it for sure in the post game and in any interviews given over the course of the next few days. Free throws have essentially helped them get back in this right. game, right. but Ultimately, you got to shoot them at a better clip, especially at home. Braves working the perimeter. That's a two, long two. Two Blazers crashed. It's one of the advantages of Gaines, although only 6'2", slightly built. He can practically jump out of this gym maybe change a light bulb at the uh, at the top the Gaines has physical gifts that few guys have and they're always on full display especially in transition you know rebounding the basketball is something that he obviously he's getting better at for the Blazers Tony Tony AJ Vasquez do a great job of rebounding the basketball to help out JV and Davis as well as Jackson Lindeborg last year Gaines took a, a back seat to Jelly Walker and Trey Jemison and this year, he is trying to become not only a leader on the floor, but in the locker room, he's trying to become more vocal. Right. And Air Gaines, last year, Jelly Walker did all the talking, he did all the scoring, he did all the shooting, all of the things. Now, Air Gaines is essentially his team. That's right. And he has to take on more of a leadership role, and he's getting more comfortable doing that. 
obviously this is his second year. It's only the fourth game of the season with new teammates. It'll take some time, but he needs to do everything he can <laughs> to expedite that process. Well, Javion Davis has not scored a point until now. Uh, I mean, if you're the Blazers, lead by six, and your big man has his first point of the game, and it comes at the charity stripe in the half. Well, he's only taken one shot, and credit Alcorn State, interior defense, they've made it tough for the Blazers to get the ball inside to him, and when he has had it, they've been surrounding him, essentially double-teamed and forcing him to get rid of it. Kudos to Javion for not forcing any of the action offensively. But for the Blazers to be successful, he has to look for opportunities to score. He has to look for dirt, garbage points, putbacks, offensive rebounds. He can't go and make – he can't – they can't be successful if he's only taking two shots, one shot each half. Seven-point lead for the Blazers. Good defense. Davis – after the deflection by Gaines. Nice lead pass, Davis. Nice feed, Vasquez. Second chance by Vasquez. He now has 19 points. And those are two of the best passes you'll see tonight. One from J.D. and Davis to Lindenburg. Lindenburg with the touch pass. A.J. Vasquez right there. Two of your big men making passes looking like perimeter guys. Looking like point guards out there. So a double team defensively, Mo. And then Gaines again on the defense. That should be a foul on Kendall. That's his third. Won't be a flagrant, but uh, the word that comes to mind, violence, see if we have a slow-mo replay. That was a pretty good clothesline. And <laughs> Gaines checking his uh, salad there to make sure <laughs> they're all in place. All the, all the lettuce is still there. Well, Gaines there, he's a tough guy. He doesn't, You can't attack that rim without being a tough guy, as we see here. Javion Davis, great defense. Gaines with the block. And now we see Kimmel just kind of come across the shoulder a little bit. Lindeborg wants three. Stolen. Gaines. Pull up three from the wing. And that's part of the evolution of Eric Gaines, that we've seen him make more perimeter jump shots over the course of the first four games, as opposed to how much, how many he made last season. You got to be feeling really confident to have to pass up a two-on-one opportunity and pull up for three. <laughs> um, but since then, the record here in this arena is 436 to 107 all time, which honestly, I want to look at other arenas records because this one has to be one of the top tier places, which just shows the success that UAB has here on their home floor. Obviously, when you look at the numbers, they're winning four out of every five games, you know, four, four and one every time around. So, uh, and again, Andy's in 48 and seven with a loss to Bradley and nearly a 90% winning clip here at Bartow, where the crowd certainly makes a difference. You know, turnover giving Alcorn State a chance to cut into the lead. Nice bounce pass, bucket, and a harm. Some foul. Four really close games. And so you hope that the experience early helps you when it matters the most later on in March. A fortuitous bounce for the Braves. See if they can convert two points out of this. Little baby hook missed by Kendall. Here's a stat for you. UAB, you talked about this on the pre. They could be 3-0. They could be 0-3. The stat is this. Coming into today, just four games, UAB averaging exactly 71 points per game. And they're giving up exactly 71 points per game. I saw that. I saw so it's that a break even. And, that, you know, I don't know if I, that I've ever seen that before ever. Uh, and it just speaks to how close the games are as we see a What a contest by Coleman, the second block. And Coleman there. James White should be looking to give Coleman. Swatted out of bounds. I heard a whistle. Could be a foul. James White should be looking to give Coleman a free lunch after bailing him out there. Coleman, White was essentially in no man's land. And Coleman came over. That's the came over there. Sees Kendall coming. It just does a great job of getting vertical and rejecting him. Not once, but twice. Well, this time, number 13, Kendall was unlucky because number 13 <laughs> for UAB was. But I think if you're UAB, you gotta 
you have to do a better job of cleaning up the defensive miscommunications and the lapses in play. And I think that's what we've heard Coach Kennedy scream about tonight. Javian Davis, we talked about how he hasn't done a ton of scoring offensively or done anything offensively in terms of scoring the basketball, but he hasn't had opportunities because Alcorn State, they've been in the right position collectively as a team. They've been connected defensively, and they've limited his opportunities. UAB hasn't done a good job of doing that. They did a better job the last two games on the road. They were taking steps in the right direction, but again, there has been some defensive lapses today. It's going to be a work in progress, and AK and his staff know that. That's a long three, but it won't happen. And then great ball movement and a contest from behind by Davis, who thought he had all ball. And again, another late rotation by UAB. Great recognition by Kendall. You're talking about your, your power forward, seeing a guy cutting out of the corner of his eye and able to essentially flip it over his shoulder between two Blazer defenders. This is Trayvon Stottlemyre at the free throw line. From Calera. Got it. Lead down to seven. Now we'll see if the Blazers can weather the storm. They've had a little bit of a lull offensively, haven't been able to score the past couple possessions. Let's see if Alcorn State, after the free throw, see if they go to a little zone look, force the Blazers into a tough shot. So a bit of a homecoming for Stottlemyre with the rainbow free throw. He goes one for two. We'll approach the 14-minute mark here, second half. Blazers by seven and in possession. Gaines with that wraparound pass. Davis got stripped. So, again, good collapsing by Alcorn State, it's, right? It's great collapsing defense by Alcorn State there. Gaines with a great feed. Javion Davis has to catch that ball and score immediately. He can't put it on the floor. If he puts it on the floor, more guys are coming. 14 to shoot. Coleman got stripped. And a reverse. Nice body control by Gaines Wyatt. Gaines Wyatt taking it straight to the rim. Great job of attacking. Alcorn said they've attacked early in the shot clock the entire game. White, who's had a good game, productive game. And then Gaines picks up an easy rebound, so Eric uh, uh, tries a three. In and out. White, stripped, steals it back. Three for a dollar. Three ball to light it up. Yes! And that's Butter Johnson is establishing himself as a legitimate third, second, third scoring option for the UAB Blazers. We liked him last year, Mo. Uh, he's grown so much physically, obviously, but just his understanding. The game is slowing down a little bit for him, and he's doing a really good job of picking his spots. And we see him sky for the board. He's doing a little bit of everything now. Gaines along with White. Gaines on the reverse. Highlight effort. Ten-point lead for the Blazers. Landon Bussey might be using one of his timeouts. Both Bussey with a veteran group allowing them to play through the run. Hit this mini run by UAB. Corner two, wing two, I should say. Missed by Kendall. Stolen. Yes. And that's Gaines Wyatt. And that's at least the sixth the six point that Alcorn State has stolen from the Blazers, essentially on a... Get back in. He's still attacking, attacking. And they are picking up steals, which means they're playing defense. Right. They've done a really good job of turning UAB over. Some of them self-inflicted by the Blazers, but a lot of it just being in the right spot at the right time. We see Vasquez get to his spot at the right elbow for the pull-up jump shot. Alcorn State not going to stop attacking. You mentioned they don't shoot the three well. If they get behind, how are they going to manufacture points? Continuing to push the pace. Vasquez, by the way, has just set a career high. That includes his work at St. Bonaventure. He has 21 points against Alcorn State tonight. You see the, the, the drive to the bucket by Hawkins, which was strong. Again, not settling to those guys and their commitment to him. I mean, he puts a lot of energy. He's a very uh, emphatic 
an articulate coach. And when he was talking to Lyndon, you could tell he was out of gas. His voice was already gone. 20 minutes and, uh, you know, if, if he got paid by the by the, by the f travel, by the feet there, he, <laughs> he'd be a wealthy man. He, he should get a deal with, you know, maybe Apple Watch or, right, that's what I'm talking of, about. or Fitbit yes. or something. He's getting yeah. in a, yeah. tons of steps over there. He's as tired as the players are. Lyndon, I think you and, uh, and Bussy are eating at the same place. I mean, you both get that, that great figure now, huh? Oh, yeah, we've been working on it. At one point, I was like, is he about to shoot for his team in the paint? Is he about to go up for a layup? <laughs> Fun to watch, and you can tell, again, he takes it seriously. He'll have his team very competitive, even with that monster schedule. Blazers by 10, 11 minutes remaining. Davis a facilitator, but Coleman was not able to finish. There's Hawkins. No numbers for the Braves, so they back it up. If you're the Braves here, you want to keep looking for opportunities to attack early. Blazers did not hold the ball. I thought they would kind of maybe pull it out a little bit after that last possession was such a scramble. Sinkovich is coming up short on a hook. We haven't seen a whole lot of Alex Sinkovich. He's from Belarus. A lot of guys find, finding their way to Alcorn State. Vasquez stripped. It will be UAB ball. And that's a really good defensive play there by Gaines White. He was beat on the little pin down action. The Blazers run to get Vasquez to the right elbow. Did a great job of recovering. Vasquez has already hit a career high. But a Johnson's not too far away. From his career high, just too shy. Davis looking for help, but he threw it right into the arms of Hawkins, who finishes for two. And the Blazers have to do a better job of spacing the floor. The double team is coming. Javian Davis touches it on the block. The double is coming. The Blazers have to do a better job of making themselves available. There should be a guy either running to him, to that wing, and within his sight, so that way he can make an easier pass. Eric Gaines for the three ball. Coleman feeding Davis for the slam. <laughs> Gaines, this is a chance. You see Coach, one of the coaches there sharing with him. You've got to understand time and score and situation. You haven't played great offensively. There's no need to rush and waste possessions. This is Gaines Wyatt. Gaines Wyatt. Bounce pass down low. Kendall comes out for a three that's short. Let's see if Kendall pushed. Did he push? Yes, he did. Push and that's, Davis. That's really good spacing by Auckland State. There. As you notice, Kendall got it on the block. Double came. But he did a good job of finding an open shoot across court. That time, Butter with a great, Butter Johnson with a great challenge. I think maybe he stepped on the line. Ah. Yeah, that replay showed, yeah. Approaching the nine-minute mark. UAB look to go back door. Here's Vasquez. That'll be against UAB, I believe, Davis. JD. Only the second on JD. Well, I think one of the things for JV and Davis, I, I've noticed he's been in, he's been plagued by foul trouble. And it's not so much the fouls in themselves, it's the type of fouls that he's been getting. He's been getting fouls where he has no a chance to make a play on the basketball, no chance for the offensive rebound. Players are 93 feet away. And here with nine minutes left to go with a 10-point lead, and you haven't played your best, you don't want to allow Alcorn State to get back into it at the foul line. Is it possible that him worrying about his foul is, uh, foul trouble is affecting him a little bit offensively? I think it definitely takes some of his aggressiveness away defensively. Offensively, it shouldn't be an issue. He has to understand that he's going to warrant a double team. Two guys are going to be coming at him for the rest of his college career whenever he catches that ball on the block. And so for him, it's just about being smarter and making better decisions. Guy we were talking about, then a turnover on Davis. Thorn, Thorn lets it loose. Tony, Tony. And Tony gets stripped. Back to Thorne. Thorne. And it's blocked by 
Tony, Tony from behind. Kendall teardrops at home. And Tony, Tony made an outstanding defensive play there. Almost got the Blazers out of trouble there. Unfortunately, no one else was back with him. Kendall picked up that loose change. Alcorn State only down by six. A lot of time left, and Butta try to connect from straight on in a three. Instead, a bucket will it count in a foul. Looks like it will. Absolutely will count. One of the things that the Blazers pride themselves on, especially at home, creating turnovers and transitioning fast break points. Gaines Wyatt leaves it a little short. Coleman had trouble corralling it. And Alcorn State with a chance for a two for one here because the free throw was missed. Now they get the ball out of bounds. I'd be looking for Kendall. Look for 13, Mo, right? Got to go to him, right to him. They go. So Isolated with JV on Davis. Does he want to fade away? Teardrop short. All corn state ball. It was off of Vasquez. They just won't go away. They, they're not going to go away. They're a veteran team led by a veteran coach who's experienced some success inside this building already. As we love to see guys hustling on the floor. I think one of the things that goes back to the Blazers and sort of their, I won't say carelessness, but their lack of concentration defensively, that's a rebound that they essentially should have had right there. Eric no, Gaines no goes question. for it with one hand as opposed to going with it for two, with two. And one by Coleman. Here's a steal by Gaines. Two on two. Spin rejected. And here come the Braves down by four. Seven and a half remaining. Gaines Wyatt. The game's trying to get it back, and he is called for a foul. And you can't go and make it. Coming up. A one and one, I should say. So it will be two because Gaines Wyatt hit the first. He has nine points. And Kendall, he, he's averaging under 25, right under at 24 and a half points a game. You knew he wasn't going to come in and get quite his average. But the other guys, Thorne, Gaines Wyatt, they picked up just like Thorne with 13. Gains wide with 10 after that free throw. And right now we have a two-point game. Who would have thunk it? If you're UAB, you have to come down and execute offensively. You can't afford another empty possession. 8-0 run currently for the Braves. Vasquez has had the hot hand. That might have been a bailout right there. He's about to lose that ball. 21 total points. Again, that's a career best. And the Blazers, they're very fortunate to get him. He's, they've needed every single one of them tonight. With the absence of Gaines, Gaines only eight points. JV and Davis only four. Vasquez and Butter Johnson, they've done the offensive work for the Blazers. Vasquez at the line has been money, Mo. Six for six. And again, UAB has needed every one of them right now to maintain a four-point lead. 23 for Vasquez. Get some pressure in the backcourt. All points State bringing Joshua back in the game. He started off the game very aggressive on the offensive end, attacking the rim. He's out here. He's back for the last 640 of the second half. Got a very quick first step. Joshua against Vasquez. And Joshua gives it up and he gets it back. One to shoot, Mo. Shot clock violation. That should not count. And you tell me that looks like the officials will review it. I say no. They're not leaving it to any guesswork, but double checking. And an outstanding shot by a DIFP crew. I think there's Pat, Patty G on the replay there with clearly the ball in the hands of the shooter. White. Vasquez alone for a three. I'll tell you who's been awfully busy tonight. Jahi Bonet. The guy who's appeared in just one game prior to tonight. 
Alcorn State for two. Rebound by their best player, Kendall. Cannot hit. Here come the Blazers. Gaines, three on two. Coleman wasn't ready, but White was. No foul. That's clean. Here come the Braves, four on one. Three ball. Hawkins. And Gaines. And you see two things on those the last two possessions. For a pretty good shooter who has seven points tonight, Alcorn State has proven they're, they're better than the percentages have shown so far during the season. Lendeborg. Can't get it to fall. And he had a second chance at it. That'll be Alcorn State ball. Right, Lindeberg having trouble finishing at the rim. He has four points, a couple misses near the cup. And that's pretty good execution right there for the Blazers on offense. You're getting a shot that you can make in the hands of a, getting a shot, a really good shot for a capable player. And that's just one he has to make. He has to make those. Braves able to beat the pressure. A little over five minutes remaining. Byron Joshua, fourth year at Alcorn State, leans in, draws a foul. Heady play from the veteran point guard. Attacking Eric Gaines there. Again, Joshua started off the game really quick, really in attack mode, getting into the paint, looking to dish, looking to make plays offensively. And he's been relatively quiet. But I look for him to try to come in and take over this game at the guard spot for Alcorn State. Joshua had four points all in the first half. And he may have had him in the first. In the first. Trying to make the second of two. That's what you expect out of your senior point guards. Nailed two when it counts. The lead is two as we hit the five-minute mark. Vasquez drives, finds Butter for three. Get a good look, Mo. Now two on O. Oh, this is for a tie. Thorn has been a thorn in the side of the Blazers. He's tied the game with 4.42 remaining. Thorn with a leak out right there for the easy basket as Andy Kennedy takes a timeout. Alcorn State gave up 100 in their last game to. Arkansas State, they're right in this one. Uh, they're pointing at Davis. His, uh, his foot did not go across. And a turnover, which will give the Braves a chance to take the lead. Nice pass and the finish by Stoudemire. And the Braves back out in front by two. And again, all Braves running in unison. Blazers stopped watching a little bit. Got caught up in what was happening with the officiating. Find themselves down two. Gaines gets in, up and down. Lucky to maintain and then Lendenborg again. He was about to lose it when the Braves fouled him with uh, about seven seconds left to go on the shot clock. And I think right there, you've got to be a little more aware of where you are on the floor and also your skill set right there. Lindenborg driving that basketball from the, city from the same side it just came from. Defense hasn't shifted. If he had been just paying just a touch of attention, he had a wide open shooter over here in the corner who happens to be one of the best shooters on the floor tonight, Butter Johnson. Lended board with a one and one. Cannot connect. Loose ball goes back to the Braves. So here are the Braves at 4-0-1. Up by two and in possession. If you're Alcorn State, you get it right into the hands of Joshua and let him continue to work and direct and try to dissect this blades of defense as we see them go back to the 1-3-1 zone. After that emotional win against Maryland, UAB thought that they were going in the right direction. He's an excellent free throw shooter, 15 out of 17 prior to tonight. And again, I always thought, Mo, a point guard, a veteran point guard, you've got to be 75% or above because you're going to be handling the ball late in games. He's going to handle the ball here. No Gambrel, no Kendall out there now. He's going to be essentially who they play through. Two possessions now. Four-point lead 
So UAB led by 10 in this half. Remember, they led Bradley in the second half. Gaines pulls up. Got it. And that's pretty good patience there by Eric Gaines after the pick and roll, snaking it back to the middle of the floor to get to his spots. And the Blazers here, they got to get a stop here. You got to find a way to keep Joshua out of the lane. You got Benet down low, number 15. He has caused some problems as well. Let's see if they dump it off to Benet. Instead, the reverse and the finish. A beautiful shot by Jalen Hawkins. And Hawkins, they're able to split two Blazer defenders. Blazers not able to stop the dribble penetration. Vasquez pull up, and the bank is open. Vasquez, he has been lights out tonight offensively for the Blazers. Just doing such a magnificent job of getting to his spots in a, a variety of ways. Here's Joshua. Davis at the top of that zone, though. Joshua one-on-one -on -one here with Javian Davis. Use his quickness. Does he use his quickness? Three-pointer with two to go. That's short. And there's Eric Gaines disrupting the rhythm of Joshua there as he was about to attack Javian Davis. Speaking of attacking. Gaines. Two coming. Needs both for the tie, as Mo just said. Last two minutes of this game as we see Alcorn State's best player come back, their lead score come back. Last two plays of the last two minutes of this game will be decided essentially by how, how well Gaines and Joshua can conduct the offense and make sure and control their teams defensively as well. And we could not have asked for a more entertaining game. We had the Bradley game that went into overtime here at our mode. 217 remaining. And we are with uh, separated by one as Joshua picks up that rebound. So up by one and in possession. The Braves looking for the road upset. You pay attention. If, if anybody cares about a spread, someone told me prior to this game, that's deflected off of games, that UAB was somewhere around a 19-point. Blazers nine on the shot clock here. Shot clock at five. That's a clean block out of bounds at four. Big time possession for both teams. And if you're UAB, that's the best case scenario on that possession because essentially there was no one in position to get the offensive rebound. Joshua will inbounds, long three, and that will be UAB possession because it went over the backboard. Shot clock was at one anyway. UAB comes up with a stop, 148 remaining. 148 remaining. If you're the Blazers here, you got to find a way to get that ball to either Vasquez or Eric Gaines around that right elbow, allow them to try to turn the corner. Vasquez has done such a great job tonight of getting to the foul line. Look for him to touch it on this possession. Alcorn State has done a marvelous job defending Javion Davis as well. Gaines. He's got the elbow. Acrobatic shot. Not a lot of guys in this gym could put that one through the if rim. It, if anybody in the gym can do it that's not already on the floor, they need to go see one of these coaches at the end of the night. That was an amazing play by Eric Gaines there. Great body control. A little over a minute remaining. The first game we had went overtime. The three ball. Joshua had a good look. One minute remaining. Gaines. Teardrop. Swish. <laughs> I, Are you kidding? I almost said really good decision by Eric. Flip the script. He came up just short and then gains with a pair of baskets. And the Blazers under a minute up by three. And if you're the Blazers here, you got to make sure Joshua doesn't get into the lane for any penetrating kick opportunities. Gives up the dribble. Thorne. Here's a three. Got it for a tie game. That's a tough big time shot right there from Hawkins. Joshua making the extra pass, a quick pass, late rotation again. 
by the Blazers. And if you're the UAB, you want to get it in the hands of Eric Gaines here or possibly A.J. Vasquez. See if they can make a play offensively. It's Gaines. You don't want to foul if you're the Braves. But a Johnson for three. Got it! Here come the Braves. They now need a three. 18 seconds left to go. Joshua trying to break his man down. Shoots for two. Won't go. That should do it with 10. But then a turnover for the tie. Just short. Three seconds. One more shot. We got zeros, but we also have one of the officials